why do I teach them something like that now? It hadn't really become popular. But the best answer I can give you is that to be forewarned is to be forearmed. If you know what's happening, you can stop it. But to try to stop it after it starts is much, much more difficult. I preached in a congregation some years ago, and I saw what I considered an evil. I preached a series of lessons over four or five weeks on Calvary. One of the elders told me, well, what, what are you preaching that here for? We got the Calvary, the Calvary that will be had in the churches surrounding the area. I told the Felix, if you invite me back in 10 years to hold a meeting, the gospel meeting for a lectureship, and you tell me I wasted my time because it never Calvary and never showed up here, I will conclude I was my teaching there on Calvary was not only acceptable, it was useful. It stopped it from coming into that church. His answer was, oh, I didn't think about it that way. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. And what I'm trying to do, and whatever time the Lord gives me left in this life, and the privilege of being here with you, another faithful brother whom I love deeply in your nation, is to forewarn you of what these men are doing. It's bad enough the Americanos are doing it, but they're converting their Filipinos, some of them, to their concept because it means money and it means power. When we look at what Scripture is saying, we can find no place in there that God ever authorized anything like this. I read you the complete condemnation in Mark 7, the first 13 verses. In spite of that, that's also repeated in a little bit different words in Matthew. In spite of the fact it's plainly taught that the concept of God's people being governed by tradition is totally contrary to God's will. That supplants or replaces God with the wisdom of man. And the wisdom of men is not that much mine or anybody else. I don't proclaim it. Well, I've never told anybody over here or else myself, you must believe what I say. Here is what you must believe. Bob made a point last Sunday at Taranala congregation. He said, if I say it or while he says it, doesn't make it true. That's correct. It's got to be there that you understand it. This is not there. But in any way, shape, or form, or anything else. We preach what the Bible says. We're silent with what the Bible says. That is what pleases God. I don't care what kind of a pattern of congregational assemblies my brother here select. Some places like here, in John Allen. The Lord's Supper is after everything else is done. Some other places, it starts almost in the beginning. I care about whether or not we have vocal music, that is sing, and not instrumental music. But I don't care if that is led by a woman or by a man. Well, how can a woman lead sing? Easily. Easily. In one church, there were three ladies that had very strong voices. They were all faithful Christians. They had been Christians for many years. They knew the song. We all had about four or five young men. They were from 10, 12, 13 years old. We were baptized. We were teaching them how to lead sing. Wednesday night, they would get up and try to lead sing. Well, a man's voice at that time, voice work, goes up and down. As soon as that happened, one of those three ladies sitting in the pew picked up and carried it and led. The others asked me, well, who are you talking about? What woman came and said, your wife, your wife, and my wife. And I told them now, oh, they didn't see it. But it happens. And there's absolutely nothing contrary to God's word. I've been told the woman can't preach. Well, Acts 4 and 
verse 8, Acts 8, verse 4, when the scattered abroad went everywhere, they were preaching the word. And those scattered abroad were men and women. Now, I'm not saying shut God out and get a woman up here and do the preaching. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that the right and the privilege of teaching God's word as God gave it belongs to all disciples. All those converted to the Lord. And it makes no difference whether you wear pants or a skirt. God gave you the information. But God gives you the opportunity. Preach. Teach. That's it. Preach is just another word for teaching. Some of this like a turkey sheet up over it. I've even heard one sister in Christ say, and I've known her for years, very faithful lady. Her son was baptized when he was nine. She was teaching the young people's class. She said she had to send him out. She was no longer authorized to teach. Her own son she couldn't teach, according to her thinking. The stupidity of anyone giving that woman that kind of an idea that she would be usurping the authority of her man. Her son, nine-year-old son, that she brought into the world, he usurped the authority over her? What could be further from truth? 